In this video we're going to talk about contingency tables and we're going to walk through a few practice problems. So first, what is a contingency table? Well, a contingency table is a effective way of demonstrating information about two categorical variables with a variety of different levels. So in this example, um, we have uh, promotion status along our, in our rows here, promotion status, and then across the top in our columns, we have sex, that's men versus women. So we have two categorical variables that are men and women, and we have promotion status, which is promoted or not promoted. So within our contingency table, we can have a few couple things to look at. First, as we see down here in the bottom right-hand corner, that's right here, I call this the total total box. This is where the sum of the rows and the sum of the columns will equal exactly the same number. So let's go ahead and look at this. If we take the sum of the rows, 324 plus 876 gives us 1200. And if we take the sum of our columns, that's 960 plus 240, we also arrive at 1200. So our total total box, that's this box right down here in the corner, must equal the sum of the columns and the sum of the rows. What we call these numbers on in the, the in the total of the rows or the total whoops the total of our columns, these values right here, these are called our marginal distributions. Okay, this is the total number of observations in each category. So if we just take one of these numbers as a quick example, if we take the total number here, which is 324, that's the total number of people who were promoted. Alternatively, we can take the number down here, 960, that's the total number of men in the sample. Now, what's a unique characteristic about these properties? Well, the sum of the values in the row, so in this case, 288 plus 36, so 288 plus 36 is equal to 324. 288 plus 672 is equal to 960. So if we take 288 plus 672, we get 960. And if we get 288 plus 36, we get 324. The same can be said for the other values in the table. Meaning that if we take 672 plus 204, we arrive at 876. And then alternatively, if we take 36 plus 204, we arrive at 240. So when we refer to these values in our margins, we call these our marginal distributions. But what about the values that are inside the table? Well, the values inside the table, that's these values right here. These values are called our joint distributions. Okay, so a hint to remember the difference between a marginal distribution and a joint distribution is that the marginal distributions always appear in the margins of the table. Okay, so this is when we're dealing with frequency. So just simply count data. But we can also deal with proportions or probabilities, whichever you want to interpret it as. The only difference is that instead of having 1,200 down here in the bottom, we add up to 1, right? A proportion of 1 is everyone, 100%. So then we have 20, 0 0.27, 0 0.73. Again, 0 0.24 plus 0 0.03 gives us 0 0.27. 0 0.24 plus 0 0.56 gives us 0 0.80 and so on and so forth. Again, what we have here now is the marginal probabilities. They still appear in the margins. So where they were marginal distributions before when we were dealing with frequency, now we're dealing with marginal probabilities. And then we have our joint probabilities, which are still appearing in the body of our contingency table. All right, those are our four joint probabilities, and then we have four marginal probabilities, which occur on the margins of the table. 
Okay, so knowing a little piece of information can help us unpack the entire table. But let's go ahead and jump into a worked example and this will give us a little bit more information. So, construct a contingency table that shows opinions about global warming, that's non-issue versus serious concern among registered voters broken down by political party affiliation. They're giving us liberal, conservative, and independent and then use the following information. So before we even get to that following information, let's just construct the beginning of our contingency table. So we're dealing with two categorical variables. We're dealing with political party affiliation and opinion on global warming. So let's put, um, let's just put our um, political party affiliation here. So we're gonna say liberal, conservative, independent total and then a serious issue not serious issue and again we were gonna have a total and from there we can just kind of draw some lines in here to help us organize our table a little bit better. Okay, so there's the beginning stages of our contingency table. So what information do we have? Well, they tell us that we have 1,200 registered voters. So our total number of voters is going to be 1,200. We're then told that there are 200 independent voters and 500 conservatives. And let's just go through the information we know and we'll complete the rest of the table later. We're told that 440 voters believe that global warming is not a serious issue, so that's a marginal distribution. So 440 believe that it's not a serious issue. And we're told that 440 liberal voters and 100, in, and 100 independent voters believe that global warming is a serious issue. So 440 liberal voters believe it's a serious issue and 100 independent voters believe that global warming is a serious issue as well. So from there, we have enough information to complete the rest of our table. So let's go ahead and look at this. So 1,200 is our total total down here in the bottom. All right, so we can solve for this value here. So 1,200 minus 200 minus 500 gives us 500. 500 plus 500 plus 200 gives us 1,200. 1,200 minus 440 gives us 760. 760 plus 440 gives us 1200. 440 minus 500 or 500 minus 440 gives us 60. 200 minus 100 gives us 100. And then 440 plus 100 gives us 540. 760 minus 540 gives us 220. 500 minus 220 gives us 280. So from there we get 440 plus 60 gives us 500. 220 plus 280 gives us 500. 100 plus 100 gives us 200. Okay, we're good there. 440, 440 plus 220 gives us 660 plus 100 gives us 760. 60 plus 280 gives us 340 plus 100 gives us 440. So to that end, we have constructed a nice contingency table with all the information. So let's go to our next question. So 
Facebook reports that 70% of its users are from outside the United States and that 50% of its users log on to Facebook every day. Suppose that 20% of its users are US users who log on every day. So part A of this question is construct a contingency table showing all the joint and marginal probabilities. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're talking about users and they're either from the United States or not the USA and they are either log on every day not every day and we're gonna have our total here and total here we can draw our lines in to help us organize this contingency table I always forget about that line there okay so there's the beginning part of our contingency table so we're told that 70% of its users are from outside the United States. So 70% of the users from outside the United States, so 0 0.70. We know that this is 1.00, so we know that. We're told that 50% of its users log on to Facebook every day, so 0 0.50 and that 20% of its users are US users who log on every day. So US and log on every day is 0 0.20. So that's all the information we have and that's just that's enough that we can finish our contingency table here. So 1.0 minus 0 0.5 gives us 0 0.5. 1.0 minus 0 0.7 gives us 0 0.3. From there, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 gives us 0 0.30. 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3 gives us 0 0.4. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 gives us 0 0.10. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.3. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 gives us 0 0.7. 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 gives us 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4 gives us 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 gives us 1.0. 0, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.70 gives us 1.0. So there we have a properly constructed contingency table. Great. So what percent of its uh, users are from the United States? Well, in this case, for question B, we're asking what is the probability United States This is a marginal probability. What percentage of its users from the United States? Well, that's equal to 0 0.30 or 30%. What type of probability is the 20% mentioned above? Well, the 20% mentioned above is the only 20% that's mentioned. So 20% of its users are US users who log on every day. Where does that show up in our table? Well, that shows up right here in our table. And what do we call those? Well, we call that a joint probability, right? C joint probability. And then finally, question D, what is the probability that a user is from the United States given that he or she logs on every day? So question D, we're asked the probability that they are from the United States given log on every day, which is equal to the probability of United States and every day divided by the probability that they log on every day. Which is equal to our joint probability of uh, United States and logs on every day. So 0 0.2 divided by the, the marginal probability that they log on every day, 
which is 0 0.5, which gives us a final answer here, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5 or 0 0.40. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.